Hey everybody, welcome back. Check it out. Yep, we have the Freewing F86. This is the new high performance version. Um, right on top, this is it came in a cardboard box, and right on top, they let you know it only has a 30 day warranty. Some thank yous there. And really awesome looking box. I love the art, love the colors. Here's the specs on it. If you're watching this, you probably already know, so I'm not going to bore you with that. But let's see what's going on inside. I just I can't wait to get it out. I used to have a BBM F86 um, that was done up as an FJ3 Fury with a JetCat P70 turbine engine. And I absolutely love that. So let me show you how this comes. <coughs> Manual right on the top with some warnings. Got one of the wings. I love the old silver sabers. Colors are just pop and cool. Pretty good size wing there. So I'm pretty stoked for the size of this airplane. The other, another wing half here. Gotta love it. Everything is hinged and done. Big flaps. Very cool. And here we have the vertical. Again, already hinged. Gotta love that. And in this corner, we have something. Not sure what yet. In this corner, we have another one. Not sure what yet. Down here, we have some massive elevators. I wonder how hard it would be to flatten that out to make a FJ. But um, here we've got everything hinged again. Just drop right in. Gotta love that. Now this comes apart. Um, it's taped here on the sides. Nothing underneath that. Oh, look at the size of these fuel tanks. These guys are big. So I'm pretty sure this goes in there. There's a left and a right to these. So one goes where, one goes somewhere else. <laughs> Obviously, right? So much foam. Okay, here's something else I really dig. Here's the cockpit. We've got a pilot. Not sure what he's doing yet. Unfortunately, no um, dash on there, which literally would cost, what, a freaking penny probably? But anyway, at least it has a pilot. Looks cool. Cliff Sally, it says, is his name. Don't know who that is, but that's him. And in here, it appears we have the other fuel tank. These things are massive. So the fuselage is in a couple pieces, apparently. Here's the rear end. Looks like it made it okay. So something worth noting and to stay tuned for is I do have a fiery booty coming for this, and not just any fiery booty. I have a glimmering, shimmering, fantastic fiery booty coming. So here's a wing joiner, it looks like, some screws, some glue, some spare parts. And of course, what makes a saber a saber. I see one big blem right out of the gate here, which is a bummer. But right here on this side a huge hunk of silver paint is gone and it's not even in here so it was damaged before it was packaged so shame on the factory there for screwing that deal up. There's your fan. We'll be taking that out and putting the fiery booty on the back once that arrives. Very cool. The guns. I just love the shape of the sabers. I don't know why. They're just a super cool airplane. All right, well, I wanted to get it unboxed and show you guys, and when we come back, I'll get everything out of the packages and give you an overview. All right, guys, so starting in the build here, the first thing you do is glue this tailpiece on, so you'll want to chest fit everything. Your wires will go into, into there, little channel there. Um, then you put the elevator bolts onto that. Then you put the wings on, the rudder, 
the drop tank pylons, and really not much else. This must be the early versions. You must have to assemble most of the airplane because it shows like putting servos in and doing other things. Now apparently you don't have to do that. I mean the manual shows building all this stuff and installing it. Thank goodness we don't have to do that anymore. So I'm going to start off with gluing this tail on and then you're just going to simply screw this on there. A couple screws. And then same thing with the vertical. A couple screws. Fast and easy. Gotta love it. And then we'll be back. All right, guys, one thing I wanted to kind of show here, and uh, let me zoom in, uh, if I can find the right button here. There we go. So if you look right here, if I can get, can you see that spot? You can see how big it is. Damaged. Another damaged dented spot there. Um, I mean, it's kind of creased around the hatch here is not very good then on the other side here there's a huge paint chip flake there um, I contacted motion about it and for the most part the guy customer service guy was like tough luck it's not gonna affect how it flies and they're right but if you're paying for a new model I mean don't you think it should look like new I mean I don't know what's your opinion on that so what I ended up doing um, or what the guy suggested. I mean, you got two ways to go. You can either box it back up and send it out. Sorry, I'm messing with the zoom here. I'm trying to get you guys back to where you're at, but I don't know what changed. But anyways, when you first get it out of the package, you see something like that, you can send it back. Um, I got a hold of them. Come on the fence. You know, it, it kind of torques me off a little bit. I wish it was on the bottom where it's not as noticeable, but, you know, the plane is not damaged damaged so to speak it's just cosmetic crap but what they ended up doing was giving me fifteen dollars in store credit which i guess is okay i'll probably end up buying something from there again in the future so we'll see how that goes so anyways just wanted to point that out to you guys but um so i got the back part of the fuse on does not fit real good you can see the big honking gap in there um, it's okay Not great. It's like it's this back section of the fuse is actually wider than the front section Or and down below here, it's actually up too high, but the way it goes in there's no other way it can go so Kind of poor poor a design there uh, One other thing I've been reading on the forums to look out for is on these wings the landing gear blocks a lot of people have had issues if you're on grass or a hard landing will rip right out so double check once you get your legs down that they're secure and good um, you'll see here I put the mounts for the pylons on there's a right and a left unfortunately they put the letters go to the outside as best I can tell they really should have gone to the inside so you don't see them but whatever just another little scale gripe of mine but Anyway, after all that garbage, we're going to put the tail on. So I'm going to screw this on with two. All these are, are labeled very well. And then I'm going to screw the rudder vertical on. And then we'll be back. All right, so the horizontals and stuff are on. Wires are plugged in. Screws are in. So the screw package has... You got 10s and 20s, I guess, is what they call them. So this takes two of the longer ones. Two of the smaller ones go in the vertical, as far as I can tell. And then the other small ones will go through this back wing joiner. And the front part of the wing will take the other long ones. So next step for me, plugging in this linkage and putting the two short screws up from the bottom. All right, vertical is on, horizontal is on, the tail is done. You can see one screw goes there in the back. Here and one will go through here through the tube and then into the front part of there so next thing we will do would be put the wing on so we're going to use our carbon spar um, slide the wings together use the plastic joiner set it in place hook up or hook up the linkages set it in place and then we'll screw that on with the longer screws in the front and the shorter screws in the back all right wing is installed Longer screws in the front, shorter ones in the back. It was kind of fun to hold it up at an angle and hold it together. 
and get all the wires plugged in for everything because there's not a lot of space and being with one hand it was a little bit tricky but now I'll get my receiver mounted up and uh, get it bound up and then we'll get the gear down really not much left guys so other than getting a receiver mounted and bound up um, this kit didn't come with anything for your battery to go down here so I use velcro anyway it works for me but if you guys are used to free wing stuff they always come with that anti grippy or I don't know what it's called the anti skid black stuff you know that you're supposed to glue down none was included with this one so you have to figure out your own stuff there but I mean other than that like set and throws and checking the CG and you're good to go. This thing builds so fast. I'm pretty stoked about that. All right, John from the future here. I installed this receiver and realized I grabbed the wrong one off my shelf. This is the one I'm gonna swap out and put in there, if you guys can see it. So what do we got here? It's the AR8360T. I'll have that down below in the description as well as this one, if you wanna run either of those. This is my go-to EDF receiver. Um, once the fiery booty gets here, I can put it on a separate channel and I can mix it in exactly how I want it to be when it comes on and shuts off and stuff like that. I like to tinker a little bit with that stuff. So anyways, back to the regular scheduled program with this eight channel, but I'm going to swap it out for this one now. All right, guys, getting my radio set up and the flaps weren't working. I'm like, what is going on? So I unplugged the radio, tried to move them by hand, couldn't. As you can see, <coughs> They painted the model and then slid the flaps up and you can see the paint stuck and shut. So now you can see the paint is all ripped off all over the flap on the top. I swear, dude, the free Freewing Motion RC quality control is crap on this airplane. I'm not gonna lie, like, I've been wanting one of these for years, finally sprung for it after the price has gone up after the Rona and the quality is crap. At least it flies good, according to what everybody says. All right, she's standing on her feet. Everything is programmed. I just gotta check my throws. I just eyeballed them for now. I was just kind of playing with battery positions to kind of see what the CG is gonna be like. Um, I know my little scale doesn't go up to 170 to 180 millimeters, it says here. Here it shows some inches, but I know a lot of people say to do the test on the wheels, where you tip it back and then I think it should just barely come back down. So I don't know if I'm there or not, but um, here's where I've kind of got stuff sitting. Here's the receiver, here's the battery. It's almost all the way back against the ESC here. It can maybe go another quarter inch tops. Some people relocate the ESC so you can get it farther back. So do a little more research on that, but um, I can go probably a little bit more. We'll see what that does. There's a all the way touching the CG or the ESC straps. It doesn't come down too hard. <clears throat> I'll probably try flying it like that and see how it works. So other than that, everything is good to go. Um, we gotta get some touch up for the flaps for that. And yeah, check my double check my throws. So next thing coming up will be probably at the flying field. Um, the fiery booty is not here yet. So I threw it together. We'll go fly it while we're waiting for that. Um, your drop tanks, they'll just magnet on like so. They add kind of a cool touch I think is really neat. I can't see that one. It's a weird angle, but you can see that one on there. And um, yeah, so that's about it for that. So next stop, we'll be out at the field for the maiden. So don't forget to subscribe because you want to see this cool new fiery booty uh, flicker once it arrives as well. So like, comment, subscribe, check out the links down below if you're interested in anything that I used in this. And by all means, if you have one of these, I would love to hear some feedback from you. So let me know what you think. Thanks for stopping by. Catch you on the next one.
healing machine. Look at that guy. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> 